In this prototype, we want to model a game of Battleship involving a single player's board and just the placement of the pieces on that board. And so in the game of Battleship, you have different pieces. They fit onto a 9 by 9 or 10 by 10 or whatever size board. You choose where to put them and you may have some strategy around where you choose to put them or like many people, you just place them randomly until you figure out something that looks kind of nice or something that you like. In order for us to play this game, this is one thing that fundamentally we'll have to model some representation of these entities. And one thing that we can think about when we're trying to decompose our larger problem into the small prototypes that we want to very quickly iterate through is really thinking about what are the core entities of this problem? What needs to be represented? Bear in mind that those entities are not always a direct correspondence to the physical entities you see. Sometimes they can be a little bit more abstract. But in the case of a game like this, or in the case of a simple agent model like this, it's fairly likely that there's going to be a close correspondence to the physical entities. So let's think about how we want this to look. Clearly, the resultant code that we want to have is going to look something like this. Somebody's going to create a script with the purposes of having that script play the game of Battleship. And in this script, they're going to create a board. So they're going to do something like board from config or board from placements or maybe board from random. The reason that they're going to write it in this fashion rather than write board like this is because there are probably many alternate ways for us to implement the mechanism by which we create the board, the layout of the pieces. And we want to make it very easy for somebody to choose between those without those interacting in any fashion. That is to say, for the board from random to be completely separate or independent code from the board from config. And one thing that we know about object orientation is any time we're implementing something like an init, we really are looking for the unique, privileged, unambiguous meaning for this particular operation. Well, here you can think that there may be multiple different ways for us to implement this board. So it's probably a bad idea to just put that into the init. It's a better idea to use a class method here. And so we'll have some class method that looks like this, and this will give us our random board. And you can see here we have some working code. It doesn't do much, but at least it works. One thing that I think is very important is I find that moving from working code to working code to working code is way easier than trying something that I'm not quite sure if it works and then messing around with it and then getting too far off the beaten path. So a bad habit of mine is any time I try to work with some brand new tool or some library, I'll see an example. The moment I see the example, I'll want to twist that example to my own particular use case, my own particular parameters. And probably a better solution would be, you know, take the example code that's in the GitHub repository or the documentation and paste it exactly into your program. Just make sure that that runs and then start tweaking. So here I have some working code and I'm going to start tweaking from here. Clearly, I need to represent each of the pieces. And there's a question of whether those pieces need to be represented directly via a fully fledged class or not. I don't think they need to be represented as anything independent from this board. So what I'm going to do, just to make my life easier, is I'll make this board a class. And clearly, I need to know which ships exist and at which positions. And clearly, from the game of Battleship, somebody is going to do something like they're going to say board dot, you know, strike. And they're going to strike a particular position, like a position 2-2, two, two, or if we want to do the encoding, B2, or something like that. And I need to know what's at that position. So clearly, I need some sort of structure that represents my layout. What kind of structure is this? Well, clearly, it's a kind of lookup. And probably my choices here are either something like a Python dictionary, if I want the simplest possible thing, or something like a NumPy and DRay, if I want to represent all the empty spaces, or if I want to you know, be able to represent with full, with full fidelity every single thing that's there. I think a dictionary is probably good enough. So I know that this from random is just going to look like that. So here we have a starting point. Now, one of the things that I like to do is I like to try and hard code some of these items just to make sure that I understand what's going on. So here I have the layout, but I also need to know what ships are active. And I probably need some sort of representation of the ships themselves. I might need this mapping in both directions, both where the ship is by going from the location to the ship and vice versa. And when I see that, that might be a little bit of a hint that I might actually want to model the ship as an entity itself. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But here we might say 
you know, here's my ships and here's my layout, and we'll start with these two pieces. Well, probably these, since these are linked to each other, the ships informs the layouts and the layout informs the ships, I probably would just implement, or I would probably just need to pass in one of these, or I might even make it so that I cannot pass in both of these, in part because, you know, if you give me a con contrasting or conflicting views of what the ships and the layout are, that's gonna get into trouble. And so here, this is where I might actually do something in my init, or in the case of a data class in my post init. And so here, I might actually compute the layout given the ships. One of the things that we find is whenever we're implementing things like init, we really want them to be mostly boilerplate. We want them to do things like initialize dependent data, but not really presume how this thing is constructed in the first place, whether it's constructed from a configuration file or from some random orientation. Now I'm gonna hard code a couple of these things. So I'm gonna say, okay, maybe we have our battleship and our battleship will be at position 00, zero, zero 01, zero 02, zero 03. I believe the battleship is of that size. And here we go. And so here I know how I would construct my layout. My layout is just each position mapped to the ship for each ship uh, in and each ship and all the positions in self.ships.items for each ship in, sorry, for each position in the positions. So something like this. So this should give me my reverse lookup as well. So you can see that's pretty straightforward, and I think that's probably about all I need for the simplest version of this game. Now, not a bad idea for me to just print out my board just to see if that seemed to work. So here I have my battleships like that, and you can see for this data class, it doesn't tell me what the layout is because it's not one of these fields of the data class, so I might have to print that out as well. So we can see we go from here to there. Now, the actual underlying entity and by this, I don't mean the physical entity, the actual game piece, but I mean the computational entity, the thing which we are passing around whenever we're working with this data, namely that string representing battleship. Well, you know, part of my intuition whenever I'm writing something that's object oriented in Python is in the very contemporary view of writing object oriented Python code. I want to disintermediate values. This is like two strings. And so if I wanted to check if there's some alignment between these two, like, are all the ships that you see in the ship structure the same as all of the ones that you see in the layout structure, all the keys of one equal to the values of the other? Well, you know, these are separate string objects and I have to do some sort of string equality check. This might be the case where I actually want to, you know, add in some kind of entity to make these unique, to allow the garbage collector to manage the lifetime of these values and to really eliminate to the greatest degree possible just arbitrary value types. And so this is a very contemporary Python style, and so maybe one way I might do that is with an enum. And so here I could do something like here are my ships, and I guess I do need a little bit of information for these. These need not only the ship, but they probably also need the name of the ship, like the principal name of the ship, so battleship, and they probably also need the size of the ship. That'll probably be useful. So do something like that. And so here, we'll change this very slightly, ship.battleship, and you can see uh, we have that. And one thing that we're going to be careful to do is we're gonna be careful to actually make this an enum. There we go. So now we can actually do something later and say, you know, if the thing that you hit is the is the ship.battleship, and then, you know, you perform some particular action, maybe you cry out, you've sunk my battleship. Additionally, you can think that we can also ensure that, for example, you know, we only have unique elements here. And so here, if we were to implement not just the battleship, but I believe there's also the cruiser, which is of size five, and the destroyer, which is of size two. You know, we can see that one of the other implications here, one of the other assumptions that I'm making here is that these are unique. So you can only have one battleship, you can only have one cruiser, you can only have one destroyer. But there we go. Now our goal is to randomly place these, and I haven't really done that yet. Now, the random placement is a little bit tricky. 
We can think that there's a couple of different algorithms for the random placement. I'm gonna find the easiest one because what I wanna do is I wanna prototype this, I wanna prove out this idea, but I don't necessarily wanna start off by finding the most optimized or the most efficient way to do this. So my conceptualization of how you might do this is, in the game of Battleship, you can't place things diagonally. You can only place them horizontally or vertically. And so if I had a board, I could identify all the possible slots on that board where something can be placed. And if I think about how I play the game of Battleship, I always place the biggest thing first. So what I might do is I might do something like this. I might use NumPy. And I might use NumPy's stride tricks. And we have to remember what the name of this is. Stride, this is numpy.lib.stridetricks. And we might grab some window from this, which is called sliding window view. So here, you can see that what we might do is we might need the board size. And so here you can think, okay, this from random probably, probably should allow you to specify the board size. And probably should allow you to specify which ships you want to place. And you can think about, oh, that's actually kind of interesting. You can think something like that. You, know, you can specify which ships you want to place as well. So let's look at this. And these are, maybe I'll call this all ships just to distinguish it from the actual placements of the ships that I have here. Now. And this should be ship. And you know, here I can dump this into a set or a frozen set, like that. Now, let's make sure this code is still working. And here, what I'm going to do is I'll do something like this. If I am placing these elements on this board, then what I want is a NumPy and D array of the desired size that is full of empty values. In my case, I'll make these maybe none values and let's see if that works. So here, my layout or my board is actually an array full of none values of size 9, 9 of D type object. I don't really care what the D type is because this thing's not going to ever be that big. At least in the, in the version that I'm going to be writing here, it's probably not going to be that big or it's going to really make a, make a difference. And by the way, we've got a, one of the great things about iterating quickly is that you don't actually have to remember the specific details of APIs because you can iterate quickly enough and just kind of move around until it works. Okay, so here we go. That's what we have here. And then we can say for window in sliding window view of this board given some ship that I'm trying to place and the size of that ship. So this is, this is gonna be my battleship that I'm gonna start with. How do I pick which window? Well, I, I can basically construct all the possibilities and just randomly pick one, but we have something like that. Now note that because I wrote this as an enum with a tuple here, you can see there's you know no way for me to assess those fields. It might be worth my time to just make that a name tuple. And here, then maybe we might make this a ship and then a ship equals a name tuple ship with a name. Because otherwise I know I'm gonna get confused trying to figure out, you know, is it the first field or the second field? And so we need to make one or two small changes here. And there we go. Now, and here this should be ships. So this should give us, and this should be ships.battleship. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, and you actually have to do dot value dot size. So we might have to clean up some of those details later. Now, uh, we want this to be a sliding window view of a particular board of a particular size. And here we want this to be a, to think about what is going on here. So let's do a very quick help on sliding window view and see what we've gotten wrong here. Here, the sliding window view should give us a window of any size, including a multi-dimensional size. So that's fine. So what we're missing is that we need this to be either horizontal or vertical. So here, that would be, I think, what we want. Those are all the horizontal places, and, or all the vertical places, and these would be all the horizontal places. So here are all of our choices, and we can see you know, those are all the choices for positions that we have. Now, what we might do is we might just pick one of these. So candidates are this for each window here. 
and this is the those are the horizontal candidates and the vertical candidates. So there we go. And then we can randomly choose one of those two candidates. Anytime we're dealing with some kind of random data, it's probably a good idea for us to seed a random number generator. And oh, well, you know, we're gonna we're gonna choose it from that. So we'll we'll uh, make these lists. They don't really have to be sets, even though we want these to be unique. They're already gonna be unique, so it should be fine. Okay, so there we go. And so here are all the candidate positions where we can put it. And basically, once we once we choose one of these, we just we just insert this. Now each one of these should be views of the underlying data. So what we should find is if we take one of these candidates and we set this equal to uh, say whatever that chip is, we should see that the board actually changes, that it gets mutated. So let's see. Oh, and you can see that sliding window view is giving us, unfortunately, it's giving us a read-only structure. And so, OK, that's a little bit of a pain. Here, we might need to either construct one of these ourselves, or uh, we can, you know, we kind of fall into a little trap here. So what we can do is we can see if, at least for the time being, we can do something a little bit against the rules, namely, make this read-write. So let's see if we can grab the flags and force this to be read-write. And if not, we'll have to find a separate way to implement the same general idea, getting that sliding window view. But there are a couple other ways we can do this. We can use scikit image as well. And or we can even kind of, you know, figure this out ourselves. You can think that each one of these sliding windows is, is some sort of NWISE type operation. You can think if you if you get stuck there, you know, iter tools will pull in I slice and T will bring in our helpful NWISE tool since that always gets us out of a jam. So here let's see if this gives us what we want. And of course, you know, you do this enough times, you kind of remember how to write this thing without having to think too much about it. And what you can think is nwise is basically a one-dimensional sliding window. So what you could do is you could say something like nwise on the uh, board size. And this gives us each position. Let's think. We want each position, we want each overlapping position. So this gives us each starting point. If we look at this in pairs of size two, this should give us each starting position. And actually, you no, know, if we look at it in size of, uh, of size four, this should give us each possible starting position. So here, this should be of range of this. So here, you know, that gives us all the position, all the possible starting positions for that. Uh, and then I guess you just repeat that for each row. Uh, yeah, you, put, you repeat that for each row or you do it for each column. So you get the, the general idea here. These are either the rows or the columns. So you can think that, you know, if we strike out with that sliding window view, we might have to try a different approach. And so this would be the, these would be the row values. Or these are the, I would say these are the x coordinates. And here we take those x coordinates and we'll turn this into a collection of the x and the y coordinates. So this would be x, y for x in x's for y in range board size, something like this. And, and very likely what we're going to run into here is we'll probably have some sort of transposition error somewhere here. So we're going to have to be a little bit careful later. But if we get this right, we have all of our positions. And so those are all the possible places where we can position this thing horizontally or vertically. And I think you get the general idea for how we do this vertically as well. You can see, here we go. And I think one thing we need to be very careful of is that's good. Uh, I think we are grouping these incorrectly. So here, these should be grouped like this. Uh, four X and X's, I believe. So we get groupings of size. Nope, those are too big. This should be groupings of, no, this should actually be iterating over for Y range board size, yeah. Because otherwise, we're getting groupings that aren't quite correct. So here you can see there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of fidgeting just to make sure this works. 
but for the most part, this should give us all the, this should give us a bunch of possibilities. And you can see this makes sense. That's one positioning. And then you can imagine, and I'll leave that for you to think about how to implement. You could do this for the other direction. So here, really our choice here is now to randomly select from those positions. Now, I've proven this. Do I have the time with the limited amount of time that I have to develop this prototype to go further and to do the vertical as well? Maybe, maybe not. But I think I can actually kind of prove, OK, here's this, this is right. Uh, and then the next step would be, once I place something, to then assess whether it is a position that is in use or not. I could keep that NumPy and DRA and then just fill these in and then do the sliding window to figure out what, what locations are not are uh, not set or what locations are free. And so I'm pretty sure that I can complete this from here. And so for now, I think I'm gonna leave it like this. I'll leave it with my hard-coded data because I think I have enough here to at least demonstrate that this will work. And so presumably what I'll do in this is I'll have some sort of iterative approach where it's gonna go through, find all the candidate positions and then place it and then figure out what the candidate positions are minus any positions that happen to be happened to be taken before. And you can think when you're constructing this, you could always say, you know, if, you know, the here you just say if, you know, the x, y not in taken. And you can you can mark that as a set of all the taken positions, or you could even construct this layout as you go. Either way, whichever is easier for you. But I think you see you can see we have the general idea.